Hello everyone, uh, Stepan here. I'll continue the series on the Sicilian defense with the Sicilian Khan, which is a very interesting variation and, uh, well, it's not easy to learn, but it has uh, definitely less theory than the Nidorf and it might be an easier choice for beginner Sicilia Sicilian players. And of course, uh, on the top level, it's been played uh, very often and it's one of the favorite uh, variations of top grandmasters. Uh, it's uh, quite different to the other open Sicilians. Well, it's uh, similar to the Pauls and Taimanov or the Scheveningen sometimes uh, considering the pawn structure, but it's definitely completely different to the Nidor for the Dragon Accelerated Dragon, etc. because it has a different opening ideas and different pawn structures. Now the opening starts after e4, of course, c5, knight to f3. And here uh, black doesn't play d6, as in the Nidor for the dragon or any other Sicilian. Uh, black plays the move e6. And now uh, there, are, there are, of course, a couple of differences uh, to this move. Firstly, uh, black uh, is weakening some dark squares around his king, so that's, uh, that's the first point. And, of course, once you move your e6 pawn, it's uh, not as good to move the g6 pawn and to fianchetto your bishop, because you can imagine all of these dark squares being... Uh, horrible weaknesses in the position. So this move uh, to e6 immediately uh, makes the game uh, completely different to the Nidor for some other variations in which black plays either d6 or uh, knight to c6. Now uh, the the Khan Sicilian continues with white going for the open lines, the open Sicilian with d4 immediately and after d4 c takes d4, knight takes d4 uh, the Khan starts after the move a6, and this is the beginning of the Khan Sicilian, even though some uh, people would argue that it starts on move 6, but this is uh, actually the beginning of the variation. Now, if black plays, uh, plays the move knight to c6, this is then the Paulson variation, and a6 uh, marks, the, marks the Khan. Now, one thing that uh, you should note uh, with, uh, with black is that in this position, White doesn't have to go for d4, there's a variation which I prefer playing to the normal Khan, and that's c4 immediately, and that's the Kramnik variation of the Sicilian. Now you are setting up uh, Amarozzi bind uh, immediately at the start of the opening, not giving uh, Black an opportunity to go for any other variation, and uh, this line is uh, very interesting, I'm going to make a separate video on that. By the way, if you are unfamiliar with the basic theory of the Sicilian, I have linked uh, the, the introductory video I made in the description below, so you can check that out first, I would definitely recommend it, so that you can under understand the pawn structures and, and the ideas here. But uh, the move 3c4, the Kramnik variation, will be uh, covered in a separate video, now we will focus only on the Khan. Of course, there are more ways for, for white and black to deviate from the Khan, but after d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, a6, this is now the, the Khan Sicilian. Uh, and uh, the opening was named after uh, Ilya Khan, who was a Russian international master. Uh, he played during the bigger part of the 20th century. He was a very strong player. And it's not the same player uh, that the Karo Khan was named after. The Karo Khan was named after Marcus Khan and uh, I think Horatio Karo. Uh, Marcus Khan was an Austrian player. So uh, the Khan Sicilian was named after Ilya Khan. Now, uh, the, the Khan Sicilian branches out into three different lines, basically. The modern line, the, the knight variation, and uh, the Morozzi bind setup. And uh, those are either uh, bishop to d3, knight to c3, or c4 immediately. And we are going to go over bishop to d3 first. That's sort of the main line, even though uh, bishop d3 and knight to c3 are, have been played about 10,000 10, times each in Grandmaster games. c4, the Morozzi bind, is slightly less, uh, less common. So let's continue, bishop to d3. Uh, and this move, uh, well, it prepares to castle kingside, of course, it's developing a piece, uh, and it's, it still leaves a possibility for c4 being played, which often is, but it results in a different setup as opposed to c4 being played immediately. Now, black has two moves in this position. The most popular one is knight to f6. Uh, note that, of course, uh, this doesn't work because black always has queen to a5 check and picking up the pawn, so... Don't do that if you are white. Uh, and the other move is bishop to c5 in this position. We are going, going to go over that first because that's sort of a sideline. Now after bishop to c5, uh, white uh, pretty much has only one move. Uh, defending with c3 would be a bad idea because you are taking away uh, a normal developing square from your knight. 
so that wouldn't work. Moving out the bishop would be a loss of tempo. Getting the knight back to f3 might be a good idea, but I think that it's uh, much better to gain a, gain a tempo if you can, so knight to b3 is the main move here. And now uh, black can choose either to retreat the bishop to a7 or to e7. Now uh, both are quite different. Uh, if you retreat the bishop to a7, then of course uh, you are going to have a position similar to the Karo Khan when your bishop is on h7 and once white plays bishop to d3 then you uh, have to exchange. In this variation it's uh, different. Once the bishop gets to e3, you're going to allow uh, white to, to, to capture if he wants to. Well, it's, it's a tricky decision, but you can. So here white will normally continue with queen to e2, just so that he can play bishop e3 and recapture if black takes. Knight c6, bishop e3. Now the main move in this position is d6 and uh, black uh, actually is allowing white to take and the best move for white is in fact to castle not to take. But uh, if white does decide to take the bishop just capture with the knight and you can transfer your knight either to b5 or, uh, or to c6 later on and the knight isn't as misplaced as it might seem uh, here. So after d6 white can either capture on, on a7 or castle, castle is best. Now you will simply continue developing knight to f6. c4 now uh, setting up a semi morozzi bind uh, in this position which of course isn't as strong uh, as it uh, would be uh, at the start of the opening it's a different setup and now black castles. And here you can see that uh, this is sort of a Hedgecock position as uh, many positions of the Paulsen, Khan or the Taimanov uh, turn out to be. Uh, the pawn structure is a Scheveningen pawn structure or Scheveningen, I'm not sure how to pronounce that Dutch name. It's a Dutch coastal uh, touristic city but it, the name is really hard to pronounce. Basically the Scheveningen pawn structure is pawns on e6 and d6. And uh, as in most uh, Sicilians, well, black aims to, to push through d5 and white is going to be pushing d5 at some point. Now let's go back to knight to, uh, knight to b3. Uh, you don't have to go uh, to a7 with your bishop, you can go to e7. Now after bishop to e7, uh, white castles immediately. Uh, there is no uh, bishop to e3, of course, or queen to e2 because you don't have to challenge the bishop. Now black continues with d6, once again setting up his uh, normal Hedgecock pawn structure c4, Morozzi bind, knight f6, uh, knight to c3, normal development, b6, and uh, well, the move a6 at the start of the, at the start of the Khan Sicilian or the knight or for many other variations could sometimes be useful for playing b5, of course, in this position after c4, b5 isn't possible, so we are going to play b6, bishop b7. If uh, white doesn't go for the Morozzi bind setup, if white doesn't play c4, then b5 is a much better move, a space gaining move, and bishop uh, to b7 after that. So that's basically the plan in all variations of the Khan to play either b6, b5, and bishop to b7. Since you played the move e6, your bishop really isn't useful on this diagonal. And here white uh, starts, starts his attack after b6, so f4, knight b to d7. And uh, the knight almost always goes to, uh, to, to d7 in Khan Sicilian, as in, well, all hedgehog positions. Uh, and there's uh, the the advantages are three four fold uh, for for that move being played. Firstly, you are reinforcing your f6 knight uh, in case of an exchange. You can re recapture with the knight. Secondly, uh, and most importantly, you are putting pressure on the e5 square, which is white's main break, and white is uh, often aiming to push through e5. So if your knight is on d7, then you are reinforcing that. And in uh, many positions, your queen is also going to be on c7, uh, adding additional pressure to e5. And thirdly, after uh, bishop to b7, you can play rook to c8, and uh, if your knight uh, was on c6, then the rook wouldn't be as effective. Of course, playing knight b to d7 is freeing up the semi-open c file, which is uh, one of black's main trumps in Sicilians, so you want to keep it open for your rook. So uh, that's why you play knight b to d7 and not knight to c6, even though it might uh, seem tempting to control d4. Well, you control e5 as well, but as I said, uh, there are many advantages to playing knight, knight to d7. And uh, lastly, after castles uh, after castles and rook to e8, you can also play knight to f8. And uh, a knight on f8 is often a good defensive piece. Okay, uh, after knight b to d7, uh, queen to e2 uh, is played by white, bishop to b7, uh, bishop to d2, and castles. And this is the beginning of the variation. Uh, after uh, 5, bishop to c5. So just remember that after bishop to d3, 
uh, uh, black can go for bishop to c5 and after knight to b3 you can either go to e7 or to a7 and both setups uh, result uh, well both moves result in a similar uh, similar setup uh, in which uh, after both sides castle the position should look something like this now in the Khan Sicilian white uh, can either develop the bishop to d2 or to e3 and uh, well it's basically a matter of choice uh, which file you want to attack on uh, if you'd like to attack along the along the d file and prevent the the move d5 some more than playing rook a to d1 is a sensible idea of course after your bishop is developed to d2 it's not so good you're going to play rook to e1 but yeah, it's it's a matter of choice and both uh, can be played differently. Now, there's another move after bishop to e7, white doesn't have to castle. There's another good move, which I believe uh, should be, uh, well, which is my favorite, and that's queen to g4. And after queen to g4, you are asking, so you are, well, you are asking black to do something about his position. His, uh, his g7 pawn is under attack. Uh, a normal move such as knight to f6 could work. But still, uh, I don't believe that uh, it's as good. Let me just uh, turn on the engine for that. Well, yeah, of course, g6 is the best move, but after knight to f6 and queen takes here and this, uh, why can't I take? Yeah, I, I knew that there was something about this, but what happens here? Yeah, this is supposed to be much better for white. I don't know why, I'm just telling you so that uh, you know this is, almost, this is almost plus two for white. Well, yeah, after this... Okay, uh, it's not that easy to see, but you don't really get to exchange pawns, you are just in a lot of trouble. Uh, yeah. Well, you basically lose after a few moves, so remember that uh, after queen to g4 you can't play knight to f6 and exchange these pawns, uh, it's uh, really not a good idea, you should play g6. And after g6 the queen returns to e2. And uh, well, you have provoked another weakness in black's position and now you can see that the dark squares are just horribly weak. And if you manage to exchange black's dark squared bishop, you are going to be better positionally. So yeah, that's another thing. And the position should continue with d6 nevertheless. Castles, knight to d7 once again. And here uh, you should always be careful not to play knight to f6 too early because this pin can be annoying. So just uh, try to develop first before playing knight to f6. So knight c3, queen c7, bishop d2, b6, rook a1, bishop to b7. And basically white is going to have to play f4 as in almost every Khan variation. And once white plays f4, you can play knight g to f6 and develop because this pin is no longer a threat. And white can play e5 here. Well, uh, if you are white in this position, you should always play e5 if it's possible. If you are black, you should play d5. Just remember, remember that. Here, the best option is to play knight to d5 and uh, just uh, try to hold off white's attack. And the g6 pawn actually came in useful in this position. Now, I'm not saying that white is better after queen to g4. I'm just saying that uh, you have provoked another weakness and even though the position is equal for now, any mistake uh, and further weakening of the dark squares could uh, end up being terminal. Okay, after bishop to d3 we just went over the move bishop to c5. Uh, the main move here is knight to f6. Once again, uh, don't play e5, you are going to lose the pawn. Uh, don't do that. Uh, the main move here is castles, uh, queen to c7. And uh, the move queen to c7 is reinforcing the e5 uh, square, of course, preventing the move e5 from, from being played. Queen to e2, uh, d6, creating your scavenging and pawn structure, going for the Hedgehog setup. c4, once again going for the Morozzi bind. g6. And here, uh, well, it might seem strange that uh, black is voluntarily going for g6, but in this variation uh, it's actually justified because you can see that... Uh, well, uh, this diagonal isn't as strong, and since black played, uh, since I'm sorry, white played c4, uh, this diagonal is pretty weak, and uh, uh, white is going to have to work hard not to mess up something tactically. And uh, in this position, it's okay. Of course, it's once again creating dark square weaknesses, but under much more favorable circumstances. Uh, white should continue with knight c3, bishop g7, knight f3, and uh, the move knight to f3 is uh, basically uh, reinforcing the e5 break and you are going to see that often uh, that white is going to move his pieces away just to be able to play e5 uh, here uh, black should ignore that for the moment and castle this is the most important thing bishop to f4 once again 
uh, going for the e5 break, knight c6 reinforcing e5, rook a to c1, knight to d7 reinforcing e5, and putting pressure along the long diagonal, uh, highlighting the strength of the bishop. Rook fd1, knight d2 e5, and this is well, this is still theory, there are still about 40 games, Grandmaster games from this position, but I wouldn't want to go any further. Uh, one thing you have to remember in bishop d3 lines is that you have to be careful with playing g6, you have to expect white uh, to play c4, and uh, yeah, uh, try, uh, well, try to hold off white's attack as much as possible. Uh, in these lines with knight to f6, white isn't going to go for f4. But if you play bishop to c5, you have to be prepared for f4. And uh, there's a lot of theory. I would definitely advise you to look at about 10 or 20 games uh, from each position, both bishop to c5 and knight to f6, just to see what suits you best. There are a lot of games on the highest level. Magnus Carlsen has played this and many other great players. Just put the position on the board, look at their moves, and try to uh, get some ideas of your own. And if your ideas aren't the same as theirs, uh, try uh, figure out uh, try to figure out why theirs is better, or if it is, and then check with the engine. I think that will uh, reinforce your calculation skills and actually, uh, I'm sorry, I just have to turn off the sound on my phone. I forgot, and actually uh, uh, get uh, get you to to become better at the Sicilian Khan. Okay, so this was the. The modern variation with bishop to d3, which is still the, the most popular variation. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the best for white. I always prefer the, prefer the Morozzi bind, so let's, uh, let's continue. Uh, after e4, c5, knight f3, e6, d4, c d4, knight d4, a6, uh, white doesn't have to play bishop to d3. The second most popular move is knight to c3, which is the knight variation, and which is probably... Uh, well, this is the trickiest one to play, I would say, and perhaps that's why players with white are, are often going for bishop to d3. Now, black here uh, has a similar uh, setup he has to achieve. Uh, get his pawn to d6, play either b5 or b6, get his knight to f6, bishop to b7, bishop to e7, castles. That's your setup, and you're always going to go for that. Uh, the first move in the position is queen to c7, once again reinforcing the e5 break. And uh, also, uh, importantly, putting pressure along the semi-open c-file. Uh, well, even though it's not a good idea, you are preventing uh, queenside fianchetto from white, well, which might come in handy in some positions after g6. So remember that you have to play queen to c7. Now, some players, uh, some people, claim that the, that the Khan Sicilian starts after 5, queen to c7 for black, but I believe that it starts after a6. But uh, anyway, knight c3, queen c7. Uh, here, white should play bishop to d3 once again. And there's, uh, well, yeah, I just wanted to show you one thing. Uh, after queen to c7, you might encounter some players with white going for the English attack, which is played against the knight, or for the Yugoslav attack, which is played against uh, the Sicilian dragon. And it doesn't really work against Sicilian Khan, so I will show you that briefly just so that you know how to punish it. If white plays bishop to e3 here, and if you know the English or the Yugoslav attack, that's f3, queen d2, castles long, g4, g5, g6, h4, h5, and uh, crashing through on the king side, uh, there's a simple way to punish that. Uh, continue with knight to f6, uh, e5 doesn't work because you can take it, of course. Now, if queen to d2 is played, going for king uh, for queen side castling, there's a killer move here which uh, actually gives black... Uh, an almost winning opening advantage, I would say. Uh, there's a move for white to survive, only one move, uh, but yeah. The, bishop, the move is bishop to b4, uh, pinning the knight, and you can see that this pressure is quite uncomfortable. You have pinned the knight, you're immediately putting pressure on the e4 pawn, threatening to take it. And now uh, white has two ways to defend. One way loses immediately. If he tries to continue with f3, which is the normal English or Yugoslav attack setup, uh, you can play d5, and this move is just winning, and here, well, basically whatever uh, white does, he's going to be worse right out of the opening. Firstly, if white plays e takes d5, then you take with a knight, and now this triple pressure uh, wins a pawn by force or more if uh, white isn't careful. This is just winning. Um, there's, nothing, uh, there's nothing white can do. The best thing is, I think, to exchange queens and lose the pawn uh, like this. So yeah, this should be easily winning with those weaknesses, weaknesses and a pawn up. 
Uh, after D5, another move is uh, bishop to D3, uh, which might seem sensible, but this actually loses a piece after E5. Now after the knight moves, you fork bishop and knight, winning. And after d5, if he tries to play e5, then you simply take the pawn and you are once again a pawn up, completely winning. Now, uh, one defense after bishop to b4, which uh, is reasonable, is bishop to d3. And after bishop to d3, you play d5, once again opening up the position. e takes d5, knight takes d5, putting triple pressure on this on this knight. And uh, one defense that, uh, that white can employ here is knight d2, e2. And now we simply have a better position after castles, let's say eight, a3. You can at least grab the bishop pair with knight takes e3, queen takes e3, bishop to e7. And uh, this is about minus one for black, not winning, but still a much more comfortable position. You basically have an open center with the bishop pair, which should be uh, quite a big advantage. So, okay, I just wanted to go over that. So remember that after queen to c7, if you are playing this position with white, you can't go for English or Yugoslav attack. And if you are playing uh, this position with the black pieces, if white goes for... Uh, bishop to e3, uh, well, you should remember how to punish him. After queen to c7, uh, the best move is uh, bishop to d3. And now white continues with knight to f6, uh, castles, bishop to c5. Once again forcing the knight to b3. You can also play knight to c6, I believe that's a sideline, uh, but bishop to c5 is the preferred move uh, by grandmasters. Now knight to b3 should be played. Uh, in this position, bishop to a7 isn't played. Uh, I'm not sure why it doesn't work. But uh, bishop to e7 sh is recommended, and I believe that it's a much better choice because, well, at least you are not forcing yourself into a pin, and you still have to play d6, knight b to d7 to, to defend, and, well, there could be some problems. So bishop e7, and now f4. And once again, uh, both sides are going for their normal setup, d6 here, and you can see that black is going for the hedgehog position once again, and white is going for a kingside attack, uh, a4, and this is a very strong move simply to prevent uh, the move b5. If you don't allow black to play b5, then he's going to have to play b6, which, uh, well, is inferior to that, it gains less space. Uh, in some positions in in this uh, knight variation, black can go for b5, but it's not as good. So now knight to c6 first, uh, a5, and now you can go for b5, and white can take ampassan, but I believe it's okay. So b5, a b5, queen b5, queen b6 check, uh, king to h1, and castles. And here you, of course, have an isolated pawn on, on a6. It's a weakness that you are going to have to cope with. But at least you didn't allow white to cramp you down uh, on the king side. You can play bishop to b7. Now you can once again see that the ideas are similar for both sides. White is going to either uh, push through with f4, uh, f5, I'm sorry, or with e5, and black tries to push with uh, with d5. So yeah, the the best plan of attack is bishop to b7, rook c8, rook to e1, uh, or rook to uh, rook to e8, uh, rook to e8, or rook to d8, and just try to to gain some initiative. You can all often have attacking ideas if white pushes his pawns too soon with the knight coming to e5 etc so yeah this is uh, this is one of the most popular uh, variations of the khan and this is the position we have to remember i would definitely recommend picking up a book on the hedgehog uh, uh, structure if you are planning to play the khan uh, sicilian with the black pieces because basically any uh, variation of the khan is going to end up with black playing the hedgehog Okay, uh, let's go to our final variation. Uh, so after e4, c5, knight f3, e6, d4, c4, knight d4, a6. Uh, the last and what I believe is the most fighting variation for white is to play c4 immediately, setting up a Morozzi bind. This is also called the Reti variation, but I believe that the Morozzi bind is a more common name. Uh, here, uh, once again, uh, knight to f6, and once again, remember not to push e5, queen a5 check, picking up a pawn, winning the position. Uh, why should continue with knight to c3? Uh, yeah, let me just show you one more thing. After knight f6, e5, queen a5 check, uh, knight to c3. Uh, you don't even have to take the pawn with check. You can play knight e4, and after queen f3, you can take here. Both doubling up white pawns along the c file and picking up a pawn. This is even more winning. So, after knight f6, knight c3 should be played. Once again, queen to c7, preventing the move e5, a3. And this is... Uh, well, this move has one uh, purpose, and that's to prevent bishop b4, 
pinning the knight. And here black has two, two moves, one of them is b6, uh, and uh, this is the main line, preparing to fianchetto the bishop, developing. Another very fun move uh, after a3, uh, well, I believe this is more fun to play, so I would recommend this move is knight takes e4, and this is a temporary peace sacrifice, uh, which actually turns out to be quite favorable for white according to the engines but i don't see why and i i was staring at this position for an hour and i couldn't see why after knight takes c4 queen e5 uh there are two defenses uh, to defend the the knight temporarily either bishop to d3 or f3 after bishop to d3 you can simply take the knight on d4 and you are a pawn up uh, and after f3 you can play d5 and after c takes d5 e takes d5 g3 uh, d takes e4, bishop to f4, uh, you're going to give the pawn back, but, uh, well, you you are better in this position, I believe, visually at least, the engines like white, but uh, I would always go for after a3, knight takes e4, at least to uh, cost my opponent some time. But if you want to play a more solid game, just continue with b6, uh, bishop to e3, a normal development, bishop b7, f3. In this position, of course, uh, the queen isn't on, on d2 and the pawn is on a3, so there are no ideas of bishop to b4 and going for the same variation I just showed you. d6, going for your Scheveningen and pawn structure, bishop e2, bishop e7, castles, castles. Once again, the beginning, the beginning of, your, of your position. And in this position, the difference is that uh, once the Morozzi bind was played, the move f3 is often a good consolidating prophylactic move, solidifying his pawn structure. On the downside, the bishop on e2 is hemmed in, hemmed in beca behind his own pawns, and, uh, well, it's going to be harder to develop it. Uh, the engines actually prefer white. Uh, they give this as almost plus one. But uh, you should never listen to the engines in Sicilian positions because they like the fact that white has more, more space and more peace activity, but that's imaginary. Rook c1 here, knight b to d7, once again keeping the c-file open and uh, uh, preventing white from pushing e5, solidifying the f6 knight. Uh, b4, gaining even more space, rook a to c8, queen to d2, uh, queen to b8. And now, in many hedgehog positions, uh, black has a plan of bishop to d8, bishop to c7, and putting pressure uh, on the h2 pawn. It doesn't always work, but here, uh, that's the main move. Rook f to d1, rook f to e8, knight to b3 is the main move. And here, uh, white is actually going for the c5 break in some positions, and uh, f4 is still an idea. Of course, not now, because it's hanging. There's only one defender and two attackers, but those are, those are just basic attacking ideas for white. And here, well... I have to confess that I'd rather have white in this position because I love the Morozzi bind setup and I, this is what I play against the Khan, I don't play anything else and I believe that the, the extra space can often lead to an advantage for white, especially because black's dark squared bishop is a pretty weird piece and you can't develop it normally uh, to d8. Well, you can, but uh, it could lead to some trouble. Here note that of course queen takes doesn't work because of uh, bishop to c7 and uh, this. So yeah, this is just uh, better for for black. But in some position you can actually in some positions you you can actually lose that pawn. Okay, uh, so we went over the Morozzi bind uh, variation, the modern line, and uh, the knight variation, and that's about it. Uh, I hope hope you got something from this video about the Khan Sicilian. It's a very tricky variation. Once again, I would recommend uh, getting about ten or twenty games in each variation and in all, all lines in each variation looking at them over the board and trying to figure out why top players went for their moves, even though they might not have been uh, best according to the engines. And, well, you can try to find some improvements. Perhaps you're going to find something better than what they had played. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more chess. I'm going to be doing the Kramnik Sicilian next, which is the move c4 after e6, uh, 3c4. Uh, that's an easier variation to remember, but it might be quite tricky for Black if he doesn't know what he's doing. And yeah, uh, see you later. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Uh,